G'day guys, Zeke here, and welcome to another ActionScript 3 video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use GreenSock's Loader Max to uh, basically set up and build a really simple looking gallery. So we'll have a couple of thumbnails that load in, and then you click on a thumbnail, loads in a larger version of that image along with some text about what the image is about. So basically by the end of this tutorial, you should have something that looks similar to this. So we get eight thumbnails that fade in, and we get a nice little rollover effect. And when you click on a thumbnail, it loads in a larger version of itself, along with some text from an XML file. And uh, yeah, these uh, images are basically uh, images that I'm taking, so there's no uh, dramas with copyright or anything. And I'll be including all of these inside the uh, asset pack as well. So uh, yeah, you should be able to get started. So I'll just show you what you get inside the asset pack, and um, so this is my ID of choice as well for developing ActionScript in. It's called Flash Develop. It's completely free, so if you haven't heard of it before, do a bit of a Google on it because it's definitely a worthwhile piece of software to get. So in the asset pack, you're going to have an images folder, and inside the images folder, you'll have a main and thumbs folder. So these are the larger versions of the thumbnails that we're going to be loading in. And they're called the same thing, and I've just separated them in the folder into different folders because in the XML file I've just given it one name so we can change the path of where we're loading it in so it saves a little bit of um, duplicate data. Also, given each node a name as well as a title and a description. So uh, let's get started. I'm just going to create a new ActionScript 3 document, and from here I'm going to give a class name so we're going to be using a document class for this gallery I'm just going to call it main uh, set the frames to 60 and our editable area is going to be 900 by 600 with a black background I'm just going to fit that into the frame okay so what we want to have here is two empty movie clips one that's going to keep a hold of all the uh, thumbnails so somewhere down here and another empty movie clip that's going to be holding the large image that we're going to be loading in when the user clicks on a thumbnail. So I'm going to press Control F8 to create a uh, blank symbol. I'm just going to call this MC Holder and head back up to Scene 1 and drag out a couple of copies onto my stage. I'm going to move this one over here. So this first one is going to be called Thumb Holder and you guessed it, that's going to be holding our thumbnails and this one here is going to be called main holder so our flash file is pretty much done for now so I'm just going to save that into the loader max gallery start um, asset folder that came with the zip file and I'm just going to call this loader max basic gallery okay and we're good to go from the FLA file so let's start coding in um, Flash Develop. So I'm just going to create a new class. I'm going to call it main because that's the name of our document class. And I'm going to make this main class extends sprite. So another handy feature of our Flash Develop and why I like using it is that any class that you're actively using it'll automatically do the import statements for you. So the first thing we're going to do is as the function as soon as our document class loads up is going to be loading in our XML and we're going to be using our XML loader from GreenSock to do that. So I'm going to create a new variable called X Photography. And it's going to be a GreenSock XML loader. And the first parameter that we need to pass it is just the file that we want to load in which is going to be our photography.xml file and next I'm going to set up an event listener so that when the XML is loaded we can just jump to a function and I know you can do this as a separate vars object in the XML loader line but uh, I like usually having a separate line for it just makes things a bit easier to read so yeah, once our XML is loaded, we're going to go to a function called XML loaded. And finally, we'll tell our 
XML loader to load up. Okay, so the function that we're going to be going to do is XML loaded. So in Flash Develop, I can press Control Shift 1 and I can generate that function automatically. Another really cool and useful um, feature of Flash Develop. So once we're in our XML loaded, what I'm going to do is get a copy of the XML that we've loaded in and store it as a variable. So I'm going to call this xdata. That's going to be a XML object, which is going to be equal to our etarget.content. And next I'm going to set up an XML list, which is going to be grabbing all the uh, image nodes that we have here and storing them as an array. So we have quick and easy access to it. So I'm going to call this X image list. And that'll be an XML list. And I'm getting an X data dot IMG. Because IMG is all the node names that we have in our XML. So next we need to set up a loader max um, object. And this loader max object is going to be appended all the um, image file names that we're going to be loading in as thumbnails. So appropriately I may as well call it thumb holder. Actually thumb loader. That's better. That's going to be a loader max. Uh, object so new loader max and we'll give it a name of thumb loader okay and once again with this as soon as it's finished loading we're gonna run an event listener so when it completes we will go into a function called thumbs loaded. That makes sense. Okay, so what we're going to do now is run through a loop. So we're going to loop through all these image nodes and attach the file name that we're going to be loading to our thumb loader. So another handy feature of Flash Develop is uh, if you press Control B, you can get a short little snippet um, menu show up. So we're going to create a for loop here. So we're going to be looping through our X image list, which is a XML list. So you've got to remember with the XML list, you have to append the length with the open close bracket. So what we're going to do here is set up an image loader. Let's call it iLoad. And that's going to be an image loader from Greensock. So here's where we want to tell it which file to load. So we have to pass it the full path as well, relative to where our FLA is. So we're going to go into the images folder, and then our thumbs folder, oops, thumbs folder with the forward slash. And then we're going to be getting the name of the file. And we can grab the name of the file from our X image list and whatever iteration i is up to and our attribute is called url because this is what we're going to be grabbing right here the url attribute and then we want to set up some variables so basically the width of the thumbnail that we're going to be loading in so we'll set up a new image loader vars for this And what the uh, Greensock guy has done, I think his name's Jack, is um, he set up this new uh, type of system for actually getting all your vars set up for each of your um, loader max objects. And I really like this method. Um, it's similar to jQuery, if you have used that for JavaScript, where you can chain one property onto another. So that's what we're going to be using here as well. So the first um, property we're going to give our image loader vars is a name. So you can just use dot syntax and leave one line for each property that you want to include. So the name we're going to give it is our XML list. And 
whatever I is up to. And the attribute we want is the name. So it would be P1 for the first image, 2, 3, 4, so on. So next line. And what we're going to give it here is a width and a height. So we'll make our width 150 and our height 100. And we'll set smoothing to be true. Sometimes if the image is a little bit too large or too small, smoothing will sort of disguise that a little bit. So it helps a little. And yeah, that'll do for the moment. Let's just see if we're actually getting this to load in. And you just remember to close off your round bracket because image loader bars has all these properties attached to it. So after we've set up our image loader, we want to append that image loader to our loader max object, which is going to queue up all the images to load one after the other. So we'll say thumb loader dot append our eye loader object. And finally after the for loop's done, we'll tell our thumb loader to load up. So let's give that a test now. If you're in Flash Develop, you can press F6 to test. And nope, got a problem. Access of underlying property, thumbs loaded. Ah, oh, okay, got to create a function for that. Try F6 again to test. And we got nothing. Oh, of course, one more thing we're forgetting is the container in which we want to load our um, image into. So the container we want to load it into is our thumb holder. So what I'm going to do is back in my uh, document class I'm going to create a public variable which is going to reference that uh, movie clip on our stage. So thumb holder and it's going to be a movie clip. So now we can use thumb holder in our uh, document class anyway here and we'll have a full reference to all the um, code hinting. So thumb holder, let's save that and test, and that's better. Well, they're all loading in, but they're all loading in one on top of each other, so let's quickly fix that. So I'm going to supply an X uh, value, and I'm just going to let this run across the stage for a minute. So I'll say I multiplied by R width which is 150 which I should set up a variable for which I'll do in a second and let's just leave y out for a second okay so that's definitely loading in so I'm gonna do a quick pause here because YouTube only allows 15 minute uploads and in the next part we'll come back and set up our thumbnails to load up properly and fix this stretching issue as well so thanks for watching guys